Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today uh, we're going to talk about closing the barn doors. Closing the barn doors is an emergency stop maneuver that ships with two rudders like Iowa-class battleships can do. In fact, because of the design of Iowa-class battleships, they are uh, very, very effective with this because of the inboard propellers and the skegs. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, but essentially, when closing the barn doors, you turn the two rudders inboard towards each other. Uh, and then that creates so much drag that it stops the ship much quicker. There is no evidence that an Iowa-class battleship ever did this in combat. Uh, both Iowa and New Jersey had torpedoes launched at them in February 1944, uh, and both of them do other evasive maneuvers besides closing the barn doors. Uh, so while it was something that they could do, and while it does show up in a 1980s document on New Jersey called the Officer of the Deck Driver's Manual, uh, it does not seem like it was ever performed in combat and may have only been performed um, one time in tests, and even that we don't have much confirmation on. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, but first, a word from our sponsors. Today's video is brought to you by Established Titles. Established Titles uses the ancient Scottish tradition of making landowners a laird or lady, lord or lady, uh, by simple merit of owning property in Scotland. So Established Titles allows you to buy as little as one square foot of property in Scotland to become a Scottish Lord or Lady. This is a prefix like Mr. or Mrs. that you can put on things like your plane tickets, your credit cards, and even your dating profiles. That one's my favorite. They send you a certificate like this one. I'm Lord Ryan Mick Szymanski now. Established Titles makes a great last minute gift idea. Remember the holiday season is approaching. And they donate to One Trees Planted and Trees for the Future. I absolutely love this environmentalism about the company. Remember to use the discount code BATTLESHIP to get 10% off your next purchase. And the first 200 people who purchase will get a plot right next to mine in the same kingdom. Established Titles makes a great last minute gift and they're running an amazing sale right now in addition to our discount code. So go over there soon. Go to establishedtitles.com slash battleship and use the discount code battleship to get your gifts now and support our channel and our museum. Iowa-class battleships have two rudders. Each rudder is 21 feet tall, weighs 58 and a half tons, and has a surface area of about 350 feet squared. These two rudders give Iowa-class battleships a pretty good turning diameter. So, at 30 knots, the turning diameter is about 814 yards. At a slower speed, 15 knots, she can turn in 760 yards in about two minutes. So that's the time it takes basically for the ship to do a circle. Uh, so th these ships have uh, very tight turning radiuses, especially given their great length to beam ratio and the amount of mass that they're pushing around. Now, the design of the ship helps considerably with this. The two inboard five-bladed propellers are mounted on skegs. So those skegs project out of the bottom of the ship. That's also what the ship sits on in dry dock. These skegs have a tunnel in between them, which means that not only as the ship is moving is a significant amount of water coming through that tunnel, but the propellers themselves are sucking more water through there and pushing that water against the propellers. The propellers are just about perfectly behind those two inboard shafts. The two outboard shafts are further forward, so they are pushing water towards those inboard shafts. Uh, so we've got a tremendous amount of water uh, all coming against the rudders. And so that amount of area that the rudders have really, really helps them bite into the water and cause the ship to turn. Let's talk about stopping the ship. If we just stop the engines from full speed, it takes about two and a half miles 
for the ship to bleed off its momentum and stop. If we just uh, reverse the engines, we do a crash stop, which uh, we've got this great footage from the 1980s in New Jersey's fire room. Then it takes about a mile for the ship to come to a uh, complete stop. So crash stop is when the propellers are going full forward, which on an Iowa class battleship, the propellers spin outboard. Uh, so if you go from full speed forward to reverse full speed aft, it takes about a mile for the propellers to bite the water in the opposite direction and stop the ship. That could be a huge problem if, say, you're about to run aground or about to hit a torpedo, a mine, an enemy ship. Um, you don't have room to drift that far. So that is where closing the barn doors comes in. In addition to doing a crash back, we start spinning the propellers in the opposite direction. You can also turn the rudders in on themselves. There are four steering positions on the ship, uh, two in the superstructure, one on the 08 level, one on the 04 level, and then one in central station on third deck inside the armored citadel. We've done videos on all these before. You can check those out elsewhere on the channel. Uh, but they are each electrically linked to the steering motors down here. That's this right in front of us. When they turn the rudder one way or the other, and there's only one wheel for both rudders at each of those positions, the rudders turn together. Because uh, that it says you turn the rudder to the right, the electrical signal comes down and tells the motors, uh, the ones for the uh, left-hand side rudder over here, the ones for the right-hand side rudder on the other side of that bulkhead, and they turn together. There is a switch in central station that allows you to switch between those three steering positions. However, you can take over from after steering on this wheel right here, just insert that, and now I am mechanically linked to the steering motor, and each rudder has two steering motors, one here, one over here, so if one is ever down for maintenance, uh, you can use the other one. Redundancy, 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 especially in steering gear like this. Uh, so if this motor's not on, I just come over here and use this one instead. Uh, so this is mechanically linked in. If we get some sort of jam, the electricity is lost, uh, the bridge is shot away, something like that, we can still take control from down here. We don't need to switch on. As soon as I lock this thing in, uh, it basically cuts out what they're doing up there and lets me uh, take control down here. And because not only each of the two steering motors for each rudder, there's another two wheels like this on the other side for the other rudder. So now each rudder has independent command, which means that we could, in theory, turn them in opposite directions. Uh, there is even a series of commands written down in the OOD's driver's manual that uh, is for this. The officer of the deck would first order all stop, shift control to after steering, all back full, close the barn doors. So these commands are alternating between what the engine rooms and fire rooms are getting and what the helmsmen are getting. Uh, so, of course, all stop. He's given the order, we're going to stop the ship. Uh, shift control to after steering means that the helmsmen up above are letting go and these guys down here are taking control. Whenever uh, New Jersey has the special sea detail set, or the sea and anchor detail, like whenever we're going into a port or out of a port, um, or during general quarters, all of the steering positions are going to be manned so that you've, you've got redundancy. Uh, all back full is now telling the boiler rooms, we've told them to stop, now we're telling them to go in the opposite direction. And then, of course, close the barn doors as a specific order to these guys, and they know what they're doing with that. The OOD's driver's manual seems to be a copy of this Naval Institute Press article from 1988, written by a former lieutenant of Battleship New Jersey. There is a link to the Naval Institute Press article in the description below, so you can read it yourself. It doesn't just talk about closing the barn doors, it's got some really cool information in there. Uh, that is a primary source. Now, I'm not sure if this guy writes the officer of the deck ma uh, driver's manual, 
and then Naval Institute Press publishes it, or if Naval Institute Press publishes it, and then the Battleship's uh, print shop releases it as the OOD's driver's manual. I'm not quite sure what that is, uh, but this officer was on board around 1986 for 18 months. He publishes this in 1988, uh, just before Wisconsin is reactivated. So that's where a lot of the information in this video is coming from, that, that primary source. Um, that article you will see references that the battleship Wisconsin did one of these barn door stops. And if she did, that is the only known time that it's happened. So at this point, it's worth pointing out that uh, I have never seen any official documentation from the time that says that this was done or what happened. Uh, there are lots of posts on the internet and those posts always go back to one of two places. This Naval Institute Press article or the, uh, the uh, officer from Wisconsin who is quoted in it, or Richard Landgraf, uh, also known as Rusty Battleship on a lot of the old battleship forums. He's since passed away, unfortunately, but he did a lot of work at Long Beach shipyards on uh, Iowa-class battleships. And uh, he wrote something that went up, I think it's on the NavWeb's website, uh, we'll, we'll link that in the description below as well, um, that talks about how um, in the 80s, Wisconsin had leaky rudders and how they had to raise the rudders an inch because of damage that they sustained, presumably doing this barn door. So both of these primary accounts are what I would call oral histories. They're, they're somebody saying that this is what happened. Um, and I never trust an oral history on its own. For one thing, uh, Richard Landgraf was at Long Beach. He wasn't at Pensacola where Wisconsin is reactivated. Uh, so he, he may have uh, perfect information what's going on there because the two yards are talking back and forth. Uh, or he may be passing scuttlebutt here. I'm not sure. Everything else he's said seems to be accurate, but there's no other evidence there except for this other guy. Uh, this other guy is quoted in the article as being Wisconsin's captain, a uh, Captain Francis Crawford. Uh, so if you go on NavSource uh, and look at the list of Wisconsin's captains, that name does not show up at all. I was like, well, that's weird. And I went and I did some more research into him. It turns out he was a Lieutenant JG in 5th Division, one of the deck divisions, in uh, 1952 to 1954. So... Maybe that means that his story isn't true. More likely, it means that he was the officer of the deck when this happens, and that narrows it down to 1952 to 1954. I had always heard the story told that Wisconsin does this uh, during her 1988 trials um, when she's being reactivated in the 80s, and that her propeller or that her uh, rudders leaked ever on after that. So. Um, that confused me when I first read New Jersey's Officer of the Deck Driver's Manual, which is from the mid-80s before Wisconsin is brought back, because it references this happening uh, in the past, like it had been done already. So New Jersey's brought back before Wisconsin. How is this possible? Uh, so assuming that the oral histories are correct, uh, which a Navy captain and um, Rusty Battleships himself are two reliable sources, um, but without official documentation. I never trust in oral history. But assuming that that's correct, that gives us a date in the uh, early 50s that Wisconsin would have done this test. Uh, so that might be when she's reactivated for Korea. It might be uh, just a random thing later on. Somebody was like, hey, let's try this. And it's interesting because it specifically references that they tried it during mess hours, i.e. meals were served. There was loose bowls and plates and everything on the table. Um, I've been told that when an Iowa-class battleship stops or even does a crash back, it's a very gentle thing. You're not thrown forward. You don't feel any momentum. But if you're closing the barn doors, it is a really short stopping distance. You're not stopping over the course of a mile. Uh, you are stopping in approximately 200 yards, less than two football fields, or, or the distance from the bow of the ship to turret three. Uh, so this 
really gives you some major stopping power uh, if you're willing to damage the ship's rudders, potentially. Uh, so that tells you what sort of situation you'd have to be in that you do this. If you're about to run the ship aground uh, and you're going to do millions of dollars of damage, hey, maybe this crash stop will uh, help you. And uh, why do you need this for an Iowa-class battleship? Even though Iowa-class battleships are relatively maneuverable, they are uh, slow to accelerate. Uh, they, an Iowa-class battleship has uh, 3.7 shaft horsepower per ton, which is really, really low. That means it takes a long time for them to get up ahead of speed because uh, you've only got four horsepower to move every single ton of ship. Likewise, they are very slow to decelerate because you've got 57,000 tons coming to a stop. So that just takes a while. Uh, the OOD's driver's manual specifically says uh, that at high speed, you have to estimate that it will take 200 yards per knot to decrease speed. So if you're dropping from 30 knots to 20 knots, well, then you've got a plan that it's going to take you 2,000 yards or one nautical mile to come to that stop. Uh, so it, it is important to have this backup plan. Um, the other thing it's worth pointing out, the rudders on an Iowa-class battleship cannot shut all the way. They can't turn 90 degrees. Um, we've got these rudder angle indicators right here that say that the rudders will go to 35 degrees. The OOD's driver's manual says that they'll go to 36 and a half degrees. Uh, and that more or less lines up with things I've heard where you don't want to take the rudders uh, to two degrees of their maximum or else they will uh, potentially jam at the extreme angles. So I always assume they meant, yeah, it goes to 35, but you'd stop at 33. Well, maybe it really means you can go to 35, but don't try and go any further. And technically they could in an emergency. Iowa-class battleships and other twin rudder ships like these have closing the barn doors as an emergency procedure, uh, but it could potentially damage the ship. You turn the rudders inwards, those 35 degrees, they could jam there. Uh, they will probably vibrate and that could shake. That could uh, be enough to loosen the packing in the rudders that could allow water intrusion back here. Uh, th there could be some major damage if you do that, but in certain circumstances, it may well be better than the alternative. Uh, we know that this maneuver existed and was taught. We just don't know with 100% certainty if it was ever done um, because I don't fully trust oral history sources. So if you guys have ever seen this written somewhere and you've got a source other than Captain Crawford or uh, Richard Landgraf, let me know in the comment section down below. If you've got uh, documentation that says that this happened, uh, uh, other than the proceedings article or the OOD's driver's manual, um, be sure to let me know. Those are linked in the description down below. Uh, also linked in the description down below is a link to Established Titles, the sponsor of our video today. They also um, support the museum and are running a huge sale now going into the holiday. So it makes a great last minute gift idea and you can use the discount code BATTLESHIP. Battleship New Jersey also receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.